to, uh, I've been asked to share a testimony. And uh, you guys know I heard um, when you share the testimony of your life to anybody, do you know that your guardian angel bows down in one knee as to pay homage to the king as his name is being said to those around you? What a beautiful statement, huh? And what a beautiful thing it is to, to see the church, the bride of Christ. Who is the bride of Christ? The church, you. Those who are in front of you, behind you, we are the church of Christ. We are the apple of his eye. Don't forget that. And um, before we begin here with my testimony, I got to open up the word of God. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 25 says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye, your calling brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things like me of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen, yea, and the things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh, no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are yea in Christ Jesus, who God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he have glory, let him glory in the Lord. What a beautiful verse. And I read that to you guys because I myself am a sinner, a foolish man, but yet God has given me the opportunity to follow him. What a beautiful way, right? God is, he chose the weak as we are. And he is my, by faith, my righteousness. It's by his hand that we are sanctified. And he upholds our redemption. And real quick here to tell you my testimony, we were immigrants and we came from El Salvador and we all lived as immigrants in one house. And it was by somebody knocking on the door that in Norwalk that Bible studies were given to my aunt and uncle. And eventually it was um, my mom decided to go. But before that in El Salvador, I already had a good concept of who God is. We went to a Pentecostal church and I knew something was wrong. The loud music, it just didn't go right with me. I knew that God he deserved a, a, a order, a system, not chaos. And then I remember the Pope coming to El Salvador, and my mom took, took me to see him. I mean, I was like five years old. And everybody's chasing the Pope, trying to get a view of this man, right? And I knew in my mind, I said, what is going on here? This is a man. This is not God himself. I knew where God dwelt. Dwelleth up high, right? And anyways, as, we got, as I got baptized, I always had a special, a special place to come in here. I would pay attention, very young age, I would not want to talk, I would want to pay attention to the pastor, especially the Sabbath school was very important to me. And there was also small groups. We got to go to people's houses and pray and study and eat together. And um, it was very special, and it still is the Sabbath school is very special to me. And uh, I remember in my naive and ignorant way, they would talk about Ellen White, right? <laughs> and there was this lady that was very pure, very dressed, very Christian-like, and I actually thought that she was Ellen White, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then I was like, why are they talking about her so much? And then the Lord gave me this book. It was, a red, it was red back in those days, and it came into my hands. And I remember when I opened up this book, it was the way I understood many things. I understood, because I didn't get to see it in many people, the power of God. But as I read this book, it put it in a way where he does have victory over sin, no matter what it is. You know, in practical ways, it showed the power of God. And let me read you something, just real brief. Page 122. Closely examine your own heart and the state of your affections toward God. Inquire 
Have I devoted the precious moments today in seeking to please myself, seeking for my own amusement, or have I made others happy? Have I helped those connected with me to greater devotion to God and to appreciate eternal things? Have I brought my religion into my home and there revealed the grace of Christ in my words and in my deportment? And when I started reading those words at a very young age, I understood that God has the power to change even a sinner like me. I know I'm not perfect, but I got to see a different level, practical level, that eventually drives you to read more of this. And, um, you know, it's been up and down the journey here and there. And the reason why we came to this church is because the prior church was not opening. And um, we cannot close the church no matter what. Maybe if they're standing there with guns or whatever, that's the only way. But we are not going to close the church. Never close it in your heart no matter what. And if we happen to get COVID and die, well, so be it. <laughs> so be it. We have to follow our Lord, right? And as we turn the time and we get to see what's happening in the world, we cannot deny what's going on. We see the man of sin, which is the Pope, influencing himself all through politics, even the social media. And things are taking place right now where we got to wake up, brothers and sisters. We got to examine our own lives, our own hidden sins, and come to God like the, our Sabbath school was talking about repentance and how in Deuteronomy, God, he foretold, he pretty much knew the future, right? And yet, he told them basically, you guys are going to do this to me. And then he decided, he told them, then I'm going to forgive you and follow me. And um, my time is up. It's very fast. Seven minutes goes by fast. But I hope that you got to know me. My name is Cesar Racinos, and I'm sure you guys see my family. And I hope to be part of this church. And I hope to get to know each and every one of you sincerely a little more and work together for the cause of God. Thank you.